When dealing with pretty much any type of dungeon crawl classic fantasy dungeon scenario, you often run into skeletons. So today, we're gonna paint some skeleton minis to use in our tabletop games. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner, and welcome back to the Daily D20, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. And so today, we're gonna paint up some skeleton minis. I'm using this out of for two reasons. One, to make some videos showing that how simple a skeleton mini is to paint, and also so I can do a little dent on my mini collection, which I really should be painting up to be used in my games. So let's just get into that. I picked skeletons for the first model that I would paint because it's a really simple design. There's not a lot of details on these things. You can see this guy has a shovel and a sword and that's pretty much it and the rest is just skeleton. So I'm going to be cutting some corners on this. You can see I already have it primed. That's pretty much the base coat. I'm not going to do a whole other coat of color. Like I'm not going to prime it white just to paint it white over the top of that. That just seems like a lot of extra work that I don't really need. And then of course add some details onto the shield and the swords. So it's not going to be a difficult thing to paint, and that's kind of why I chose to do skeletons first in terms of painting videos, because it won't take a whole lot to get this up to a point where I'm happy with the look of it. So, and so I decided to do something a little fun with this. I'm going to take actually shades. If you remember before I talked about shading, and I used a black kind of shade that would get in on the crevices. For this, I'm actually going to use two colors. I have one called the Agrax Earthshade and one that's Athonian camo shade, and it's a brown and a green. And I kind of like the idea and the look of combining these two together to put it on here to give it a grungy, dirty kind of decay look. Now I can mix this together, and it gets this like dark green, brown, kind of putrid, nasty color um, that I kind of like. So, and then with that, I'm just gonna be, get pretty liberal. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the on the shield and the sword too, and it's just going to go in all the crevices you'll see here, and it'll add some nice depth and look, and it paints it, it makes it look green, but then we go over it with highlights to bring back some of the skeleton whiteness that is we want from this. All right, that's done. This has dried. The other two are drying after the shade, but this one looks pretty good, like I can continue. Always let the shade dry before you continue painting over the top, otherwise you're just smearing it around, and you don't want to smear your shade. So I got my dry brush. It's kind of the squared off one. Kind of grungy. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm going to get some paint on it. And then just wipe it off. So I'm basically, what will be left behind by the brush will be very faint. And I'm actually going to cheat and start in the back of this guy first. And just start kind of going over him. These skeletons are really good for showing dry brushing because they're very ridged. They have a lot of different ridges and crevices and it's not, uh, you know, they're just very defined spaces where the bone, like on this part, you can see there is a ridge in the, in the crevice and then the other ridge, you can see it clearly. And this is the, actually the effect I was looking for. It's like kind of dirty crevices. The, bones can be highlighted in some you know bright white spots so even if I get a little too much paint on my brush and it you know is a little too white it doesn't matter I'm like now that's turning out let me get his hand a bit better and last I'll get his you know palms and his little inner arm here also needs some you know attention alright all right, now that the dry brushing is done on all of them, I'm going to change my focus a little bit more to the details because the skeleton itself, I'm happy with. But I want to focus on the weapon and the shield and the base, and then I'll be pretty well done. So for the weapon, I have this one. It's called the Iron Breaker, and it is a dark metallic metal, so it's not super shiny. And I'm just going to do a coat. And 
this one I may have thinned it a little too much. I see that's not very opaque, that's fine. I'm just gonna get the whole blade. Okay, now looking at the shield, I want to do it kind of like it's wooden with some accents. It has some designs carved into it. I guess I gotta hold it over here to get it in the center of the screen. It has this kind of star, but I want to do a brass, like a copper or a bronze. There we go, that looks better. But I think that would look cool as like an old banding around a shield and kind of the details there. Uh, but the inner parts is the other thing I want to deal with. I want to do... Um, I think I'm gonna make it look wooden, like I'm gonna do brown. So first I'm gonna give that a brown base coat. And then I'm just gonna to go to town on the middle here. I'm not gonna worry about the strands so much. Anything that I cover up accidentally will get painted over anyways. So I'm just gonna try to hit it. Make sure I get a good cover on this. And like the center, I'm okay if I get brown on it. It doesn't really phase me at all on that center little thing, but I'm gonna try to keep it clean. There we go, just a nice little brown circle. Flip it over, do the inside. All right, got myself set up with some copper to paint. It's it's kind of a cool color, I like it. I realized as I opened it that this was the first time I've used it. And I've had it probably for like a year. Let's do this, and I'm gonna do the, out on this I'm gonna do first the outside edge. And this I'm gonna be more careful because I'm covering over the brown in the middle. And you know, looking at these now, they don't look that bad. It's hard to see the contrast on the camera here. Between the two, you can see this glint from the metallic versus the non-metallic. That's kind of all it's got going for it right now. Um, so I'm gonna focus in this time on this stonework right here. See this has, he has his foot up on this rock. So I'm just gonna paint it gray, like a rock. Before I move on to the base, I do need to hit this shield with some shade. I need to give it some life, some depth here a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Nolm oil, this black uh, color here. I'm going to get the circle part here and the inside circle here. And hope for the best. I like that, actually. I dig that. I like that a lot. So. Um, in an effort to keep that to dry without dripping, I'm gonna just lay it kind of on its side and hope it doesn't drip out as I do the others the same way. Because that turned out way better than I had thought it would. Alright, so those need to sit for probably half an hour or so to make sure they dry completely, so I'm gonna let them do that. Just the brush, and I'm just gonna go nuts here. With that, this is basically how it's gonna look. I mean, you know, we got just a nice solid black base. We have the weapon is metallic. It's a real simple paint job, but it takes it from being some fake plastic, you know, little thing to looking a little bit nicer. So yeah, that is the that's painting a skeleton. If you like this video, I invite you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos every day. And of course, fellow Game Masters, I've been Richard Quiner. Thank you for watching.